What's going on guys? Welcome back, Leo Pazzo Productions. In today's video, we're going to be having a closer look at the Moza Racing Pit House application here that I have open on my PC. So as you see, I just launched the program and automatically it pops up saying a new version of Moza Pit House software is available. The latest Moza Pit House version 1.2.044 is available. Do you want to upgrade now? And we have the option to remind me later or to go ahead and update. So in this case, for this video, I'm just going to go ahead and remind me later and I'll do the update at a later date. So having a look here at the base screen, the home page, you can see that my steering wheel is not connected and my wheelbase, the R9, is also not connected. But I just turned on the R9 wheelbase and I just connected the RS leather steering wheel to the wheelbase via the quick release. The pedals I still do not have yet, so I'm looking to get those at a further date. Looking over here on the left hand side, we have a bunch of tabs. So I just clicked on the wheelbase tabs. We're in the basic settings right now. And we have the preset for the racing modes. So just to give you an example, if I select drift, it's going to change a few of these settings automatically according to that. So the road sensitivity, the greater the value, the stronger the road feel. The smaller the value, the softer the road feel. So as you see, I currently have it set at 10. We also have the maximum limit of the steering angle, and that will be adjusted according to what preset racing modes you select. The maximum limit angle, the maximum physical angle at which the steering wheel actually turns from left limit to the right limit as the simulator base. Maximum steering angle, the maximum steering angle identified by the game, generally the same as the limit angle, but in some special games it can be larger than the limit angle. It's nice to see that if we just hover over these little icons here, it explains to us what the setting means. Adjust the overall intensity of the force feedback output from the game to the device, which is related to the type of game and the force feedback setting in the game. The higher the value, the greater the proportion of the output force feedback in the game and the overall force feedback. The integral force feedback consists of the game force feedback and motor force as well. Maximum speed and steering wheel. The higher the value is, the faster the steering wheel returns to the wheel during travel. High return speed is more suitable for drifting while low reverse speed can make steering more natural, more stable and more accurate. At the same time, the low return speed can ensure the safety of the racing drivers. Next we have mechanical back to center strength. Emulates a back to center effect at all times, suitable for entertaining racing games where the game itself has no power feedback. The larger the value, the stronger the center effect. Next we have mechanical dampering. Simulate a damping force independent of the game output. The damping force increases linearly with the increase of the steering wheel speed. In other words, the faster the direction, the greater the dampering. The larger the value, the greater the dampening at the same steering speed. The dampening assembly makes the steering wheel more stable, but there will be a sense of stickiness. Small damping will make the steering wheel lively, but is not easy to find control, and too small will make the steering wheel unreal. The mechanical damping ratio parameter is the basic setting and the mechanical damping force parameter on this page affect each other. Modify any parameter and the other parameter will change accordingly. As you see, I currently have mine set to 20%. So let's go ahead to the advanced settings over here on the left hand side, reversal game force feedback. Turn this on when some games require the game force feedback to reversal. Next we have maximum output torque limit. The maximum allowable output torque of the motor prevent damage caused by excessive force feedback. For users with small hand strength requirements, it is recommended to reduce this parameter to avoid excessive force feedback caused by incorrect settings. Next we have hand off protection. After opening the hand off, the steering wheel can be monitored and the algorithm can control the steering wheel to maintain in the middle position, prevent panic and injury caused by violent shaking. For novices, it is strongly recommended to turn this function on. Next we have base status indicator. Enable or disable the blue status light in front of the base. Next over here on the right hand side we have natural inertia. The natural inertia can increase the weight of the steering wheel to match the feeling of the real racing car. The maximum weight can be set to five times. This is the compensation function of mechanical dampering and mechanical friction. 
the natural inertia will make the steering wheel more stable, but there will be the sense of stickiness. A small inertia will make the steering wheel more lively, but it is not easy to find control and too small will make the steering wheel unreal. So as you see, I have mine set to 150%. Next we have mechanical friction. Mine is currently set at 0%. Let's have a look at mechanical friction. It simulates a friction effect independent of the game output. It can be used to prevent steering wheel osculation or simulate the steering wheel rack of a car without power steering. Unlike mechanical dampering, mechanical friction is a constant force independent of steering speed. The larger the value, the greater the constant force, which will make the steering wheel more stable. But there will be a sense of viscosity. Small friction will make the steering wheel more lively, but it is not easy to find control and too small will make the steering wheel unreal. Next we have speed dependent dampening. This parameter is used to linearly increase the mechanical dampening of the steering wheel according to the speed in the game, which is multiplied on the basis of the mechanical dampening. When the mechanical damping is zero, this parameter is disabled. As you see, I have the speed dependent damping set to zero. Next we have the setting for start point of speed dependent damping the starting speed at which the speed dependent damping takes effect. As you see, I have the setting completely turned down to zero kilometers an hour. Let's go to FFB effect equalizer. As you see over here, there's a chart that we can adjust some things, some settings, and we can really kind of fine tune things. Operating wheel, body bumps, uh, riding on curb, ABS vibration, etc. Let's go to the next tab right over here, which is in relation to the steering wheel. So here we have the key combination description, left clutch pedal plus the press menu rocker, switching maximum steering angle to 360, left clutch pedal plus the glance rocker, we're switching the angle to 540, and left clutch, press the brake bias control, setting the steering angle to 720, and left clutch, press the TC con knob, and switching the maximum steering angle to 900 degrees. Press both rockers at the same time, switch the left stick mode, cross key slash normal button. Press the TC con knob, plus the toggle menu rocker on the left, switching the dashboard UI to the previous UI. Press the TC con knob plus the toggle menu rocker to the right, switch the dashboard UI to the next UI. So over here on the right hand side, you can see that I have the dual clutch paddle set to access split. We have access combine, we have access split, and we have button. So after doing some trial and error when I was initially first setting this up, from my understanding, the access split is the option that I want to pick because I currently do not have racing pedals. I currently do not have a shifter. So I only have the R9 base and I have the RS steering wheel. So selecting the access split was going to allow me to program the steering wheel paddles or buttons to my accelerator, my gas, or my brake, which I have programmed to my paddle shifters on the steering wheel. So access split is what did the trick for me. Next we have stick mode. We have the option for button and D-pad, engine RPM indicator switch mode, which we currently have to RPM indicator. We can also turn that off or turn it on. Engine RPM indicator display mode. In this mode, the color of each light that comes on is not related to the other lights. In this mode, only one color is displayed at a time. When the ninth light comes on, the first N1 change to the color of the ninth light. Next we have engine RPM indicator timing. We have the option to set it to lead, normal, late, and custom. And as you see here at the bottom, we can literally just program the LED shifter indicator with the colors that we have here at the bottom of the screen. We can just color code them to the way that we want. And we can also adjust the brightness from zero to 100%. So in this case, these are the colors and the settings that I currently have right now. So let's go here to the left hand side. We got the pedals. Lost connection is displayed over here. And again, that is because I do not have any pedals. So hopefully we can save these settings for a later date. So the next setting we have here is the most racing display. I also do not currently have this piece of equipment, but I would definitely like to get it into the near future. As you see, that is why it is showing signal lost. So hopefully in the near future, we can do a more detailed video on these settings right over here. But overall, it looks like it's pretty straightforward. We got the speed unit, kilometers mile per hour, 
we also have the brightness that we can adjust and we also have the temperature unit we can put it into celsius or into fahrenheit let's go to the next setting over here which is talking about the firmware as you see the wheelbase is up to date the steering wheel is up to date and again it's showing that i do not have the pedals or the racing meter connected or installed and we can simply upgrade all of these all in one click right there onto the bottom so over here into the next folder we can adjust the settings like language dpi scaling the theme we can turn it to light or dark close the main panel to minimize the system tray or exit pit house current version the pit house updates we can check for updates error reporting tool and we can report an error about us moza and contact etc let's go ahead to the recovery and reset option and next we have base recovery and reset the pedestal calibration will continue for a period of time and the pedestal will be automatically restarted during the calibration process next we have steering wheel access detection which i currently have mine set to automatic calibrate steering wheel automatic detection pull out the steering wheel first and set the steering wheel access detection to automatic and then click calibrate after two seconds next we have steering wheel paddle status mode which i currently have is set at states instead of button next we have the process that's going to allow us to reset so click wheel parameter reset the steering wheel will reset the parameters and need to do the second step after access click on calibrate paddles and follow the instructions so we can go ahead and set the wheel parameter reset their steering wheel must be recalibrated after reset otherwise it will not work properly calibrate paddles note this function is used to calibrate the paddles if the paddle presses do not work or fail to work restore motor controller parameters to factory settings restore motor controller parameters to default parameters except those that cannot make the motor run properly and you can simply click recovery and here at the bottom we have normal erase firmware we got hide and show so over here underneath the next setting experimental function we got the history version so it's going to list out all the firmware updates and versions that we previously had next we have the base horizon compatible mode open the horizon compatible mode to get a better experience please click into the official website for details next we have pedal horizon compatible mode open the horizon compatible mode to get a better experience please click into the official website again for more details and finally we have the eye racing indicator mode rpm mode you can control the timing of the steering wheel indicator light by setting the rpm prompt on the steering wheel page original mode the timing of the steering wheel indicator light will be synchronized with the indicator light in the game and will not be affected by the rpm prompt on the steering wheel page for more information again visit the website note this mode is only effect with eye racing and has no effect on other games so as you see i have my set to original mode so let's go back to the home page as you see here guys onto the right hand side we have a bunch of list of games that we can just simply kind of click on and download so guys let me just remind you some of these settings are from default when you first load the pit house app some of them i've been changing and playing around with them but i will mention that it's going to take you some trial and error between playing the game and going back into pit house so you can easily adjust these settings to fine tune them to your needs so overall guys hopefully you guys enjoyed the video you guys hopefully learn something along the way i definitely appreciate you guys watching if you guys have any comments questions concerns let me know down in the comment section down below but stay tuned subscribe like all that good stuff and i'm looking forward to seeing you guys on the next video peace